Oops, that's a large crowd. You know, it's been a while since I have used slides. I haven't done that for a while, <laughs> but I'm going to do that today. Uh, it's also been a while since I've talked about Big Basket. Most of the time I speak, I talk about our journey, I talk about entrepreneurship, but my people in the office put these slides together and it's all about Big Basket. And I have no choice but to do it today, but <laughs> let me do this. So good evening and thank you so much for, for having me here. Um, I'll spend the next 10 minutes just taking you through what we do at Big Basket. Uh, well, essentially, uh, people do ask me and ask us, you know, what are we? What's our business all about? So, so I say two things, and I say two things in, in different forums. Uh, heart of Hearts, we're essentially a grocer, right? That's what we are. And that's what we do for a living, uh, sell grocery. But in another forum, you know, typically when you're going to raise money and stuff like that, you suddenly become technology <laughs> because, because that's more fashionable. Uh, you also get better valuations, I think. So we are a grocer and use technology to the hilt, right? Our, our, our organization is completely, completely process driven. Uh, people are process driven, we make sure that Processes are, are key and critical to each one of us in the company, and each process is enabled completely using technology. So we use a lot of it all over the place, and I'll try and see if I can talk about it, uh, some of it now. So essentially, we want to become amongst the top three grocers in this country. We are today number five. Uh, it took us eight years to reach that space. Uh, I think Ramya was telling me that, you know, you should try and talk about some numbers if possible. Sure, I can. Uh, uh, <laughs> because because most of it is public. We are today a company which is, from a, from a top line perspective, this year in March, uh, we would be a 5,000 crore company. And we've got to that number in, in, in about eight years. Uh, we have about 25,000 employees. 78% uh, of them are, are blue collar. Um, um, and that's the, a very large part of our, of our people, uh, you know, uh, business. So, and and very soon, actually, we'll, we'll also turn what is called contribution ma margin positive, right? So we have been focused on profitability from day one, uh, been, been wanting to get there as quickly as possible, but we've, we've done that in stages, so we call that contribution margin, which means every time you sell something, every order that you execute, you don't lose money, right? And that's what, that's what we mean by contribution positive. So, so essentially, They don't want me to tell me what we are. So, so we so we want to be among the top three grocers in the country, which means across the grocery ecosystem. Uh, needless to say that we are the number one leading online grocer, and we'll hopefully remain that and, and continue to maintain that uh, that space. We uh, we want to grow profitably, and most importantly, we want to get to a situation where uh, close to 45% of what we sell are private label our own products, right? That, that number today is, is, is about 34%, and the idea is to get to about 45% uh, selling our own products. Essentially, that helps our brand getting to each home, um, and also helps in, of course, driving profitability by increased gross margins. Our strong differentiators, you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's essentially, we are a full stack grocer, and I'll talk about it Couple of slides down, so so you'll know more about it. Uh, we are a well-known brand, well-known consumer brand, thanks to Shahrukh Khan, and he's he's done a lot to us. Uh, we've <laughs> uh, we got him on board uh, three or four years ago, uh, and he's done wonders for us in terms of driving traffic and driving customers to us. Uh, I talked about private label. We have a wide range. We have close to about 1,500 products now in our private label portfolio. Uh, idea is to move that to close to about 2,000 products, which will contribute eventually to about 45% of sales. Uh, high quality customer cohorts, retention is high, and that's, that's obvious. So we, are, you know, we thought we would get there because it's a very sticky category. If people stay with you, they buy groceries five times a month. 
and thanks to which your retention cohorts are expected to be high, unlike a mobile phone, which you'll probably buy once a year, uh, you know, and stuff like that. So we have, we have very high retention cohorts, very high customer metrics, because that's one thing we really focus on and make sure customers are happy, so we track those metrics day in and day out. We have a fully integrated tech platform, end-to-end, -end, built completely in-house. Uh, we haven't outsourced technology at all, and it completely takes care of everything that we do end-to-end. -end. Uh, unit economics, very critical to us, and I just told you, um, in a couple of months' time, we'll, we'll probably make the announcement where uh, a good chunk of our business, which is what we call the tier one business, which is about 85% of our business, will turn contribution margin positive. Uh, new initiatives have scaled well, um, and one such new initiative is that we just launched. Um, it's called BB Daily. Uh, a lot of you may be subscribing to it. It's a subscription business, fresh produce, produce uh, subscription business, which we deliver early morning between 5 and 7, essentially driven by fresh milk. And when I say that new initiatives have scaled, this is a great example. It's nothing but an extension of our current business. Um, Big Basket typically, um, you know, in a day, uh, does about 130,000 transactions. So we do about 1 lakh 30,000 orders a day, uh, and this we've done, this we've reached in the last seven eight years. BB Daily, in the last six months since it was launched, does 150,000 orders a day, and that's the scale that that business has reached. Uh, customers transact 18 times a month on BB Daily as against three times a month on BB. And that three needs to move to five, and that's when we will be pretty much done in terms of frequency. But BB Daily has a frequency of 18 times a month, right? And that's the benefit it gives us. Pre pre you know, pretty much every day the customer looks at your app and orders milk and orders fresh produce, et cetera, that, that gets delivered next morning. Uh, highly experienced leadership team. It's, I think, the oldest team also. All of us have gray hair. Uh, and, well, we can't do much about it. This is extremely strategic to us. Our entire business is driven thanks to 14,000 farmers that we have today on our network, right? Uh, we started the fruits and vegetables business day one. We took this call that we should be in that business because we believe that that's what will differentiate us as a business, as compared to other grocers that will come along. In most economies where people have online grocery, you know, as an offering, fresh produce comes much later. The reason being that it's a very hard category, right, to, to manage, very hard category to run. We chose to start fruits and vegetables in every city that we launched. We are in 24 cities, day one. And we told ourselves that it either works or it doesn't. If it works, it'll do wonders for you. If it doesn't, the perception of quality of your, of, your, of your offering will just collapse. Because quality doesn't come from Surf Excel, right? Quality comes from fruits and vegetables that you deliver. Quality comes from staples that we deliver, right? Quality comes from fresh meat that we deliver. And that's how people judge your service for quality. So we decided to do it day one. And this program is so strategic and so critical to us today. Uh, we've now, 83% of what we sell is bought directly from farmers, right? Uh, this business is about 17.5% by value of our total business. And just to give you an equivalent, in physical stores, it's typically about 5-6%. And, and, and we were wondering how did this happen, because fundamentally, I think when you buy fruits and vegetables, you want to touch and feel it, right? So the, the slowest adoption one would expect in fruits and vegetables would be online, right? I'm sure all of you buy uh, fruits and vegetables, not necessarily from Big Basket. I hope you do. But when you buy your typical bindi, right, you want to knock that head and get that crackling sound, you can't do that online, right? And so you have to trust us to make sure that we deliver fresh. So we did a lot of work around this to make sure that it is seen as fresh and is actually fresh using packaging, using our Pharma Connect program where we have 43 collection centers across the country. Uh, we work with about 14 and a half thousand farmers. 83% uh, of what we sell, it's, it's almost a thousand crore business right now. 
right, in big basket. 83% of what we sell comes directly from farmers. Uh, farmers get anywhere between 8 to 15% more as compared to what they would have got if they went and sold their produce in the mandi. And finally, we pay these farmers, we use technology there, on day two. So the suppliers on the first day, and they get their money directly in their bank, every farmer, on the second day. Direct to their, <laughs> direct to their Jandhan accounts, right? So these farmers have accounts. It's helped improve their savings, it's helped get away from typical, you know, people who will be hanging around there when they get cash because they would have borrowed money from, from a lot of places. And, and you must actually see this. When we go to collection centers, we actually see this happening. The farmers are so happy because the money has gone to the bank. And they're able to now plan and save and use the money a lot more efficiently. So that's the Pharma Connect program. It's a, it's a program that we're very proud of. We're now setting up a trust to make sure that we try and help their families and we'll, we'll keep pushing this program because it's... 17.5-18% of our business differentiates us completely from any other online grocer, uh, you know, who's currently there. Very quickly on, on, on what this full stack gross, grocery stuff means, I, I'll, I'll quickly finish this. We've got farmers, we've got FMCG brands whom we buy directly from, we've got manufacturers of products who make our private label uh, products. Direct sourcing, most of them, because of our volumes, we buy directly from them. Like I said, we buy directly from farmers. Uh, we use a lot of technology, a lot of analytics to basically push back good, valuable customer insights to the brand. And we have a separate business for that, which is called brand intelligence, where we actually mine data of our own transactions, our own customers, and give it back to brands so that that will help them create better products or understand what they are doing on these platforms a lot better. Um, comes from there, goes to our warehouse, we, we, we deal with regular consumption where we do slotted deliveries. Groceries are bought in two ways. One is your planned buy, which you buy in the beginning of the month. You, you have a list, people tick off that list and buy large volumes. Those are bought typically uh, once or twice, sometimes thrice a month. Uh, you also have high frequency produce, essentially for fruits and vegetables, for top-ups, for emergency stuff, which gets over before, you, before, uh, before you've planned for it. And for that, we have the subscription service. So we service essentially 90, 95% of the consumer's basket, which, is, which consists of planned buy and emergency or top-ups and fruits and vegetables kind of buy. Uh, goes directly to, consum uh, to consumers. About 18% of our business is also business to business. We've set up this because we leverage our supply chain, which we've built. If I can buy more from farmers, farmers are happy, we are happy because everyone benefits. So we've created a, a B2B channel which actually services today 15,000 Kirana stores in the country. So we actually sell produce directly to them. Um, if, you know, they, they send us their requirements and we supply them. This is essentially done so that we can leverage our supply chain, our back end, a lot, lot, a lot better, right? I, I buy more, everybody benefits. We've just launched a, a, a new form of delivery, a new, uh, a, a new system within, within our organization. Earlier, actually, in the slotted delivery, we used to have four slots in a day. We used to have two slots in the morning, two slots in the evening. So you order in the morning, you can get delivered in the evening. Or you order later in the afternoon, you get, you get your stuff next morning, right? Now, we've created something called code-worded 5K, because what we now do is deliver 5,000 SKUs or, or 6,000 products to you in about two to three hours. And 6,000 products constitutes 80%, 85% of what you buy. Grocery is an 80-20 rule, right? 80% of what you buy comes from 20% of SKUs. And so what we've done is taken this 20% and stocked them in dark stores within the city, closer to homes, so that 85% of what you need is delivered in two to three hours. From four slots a day, we now have 23 slots in a day. They're all two-hour slots which are overlapping. So you can pretty much see 23 slots when you order, and in, 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 you, know, you, you will get something that you've ordered in that 85% of what you buy in two to three hours. And that's what we created now. We've migrated. we pretty much done across the country. And you'll see now a big basket which actually delivers to you much, much faster. And hence, we are able to get you 
fresh produce fresher, right? Our typical cycle time from harvest to home has been about 40, 45 hours. We've now crashed that to anywhere between 24 to 36 hours from harvest. Okay, so that's what it does in terms of getting closer to your homes and delivering faster to you. Technology, right? Uh, as I said before, I'm not going to go through uh, each one of them in detail, but as I said before, every process of ours, we are a highly process-driven company. We drive this across people, we drive, drive this across the organization, and every process is tech enabled. Every process is tech enabled. So most of what we do uses technology. So supplier, farmer management, um, we've got lots of stuff which ensures that we know when the harvest happen. We use a product called Cropin. We use stuff that we've delivered ourselves. We've now, we're now building what is called Fruits and Vegetables 2.0, which essentially traces every batch that we get back to the farmer so that we are able to track quality, right? Uh, far, far better and far closer. We are also able to reward farmers. We are, we are also able to talk more to farmers about what's happened to each produce of theirs and, and you know, how good or bad you know, it has been. So that's what we're doing on the supply management. Warehouse automation, our entire picking process, our entire stacking process is all completely automated. We keep innovating there and essentially do one thing. We are highly people driven, right, today. So while we've not got to using robotics and using drones as yet, but everything that we do within the warehouse, our, our job is to make sure that each picker there or each stacker there is able to do more. So if he picks X number of orders a day, how do I make it X plus something? And that can only happen if you enable that gentleman with technology. So we've done a lot of work around that space to, to improve productivity and, and stuff like that. Last mile delivery, we use fairly sophisticated algorithms for, for route planning. Because we have bikes and we have vans going out of these dark houses, uh, dark stores. So essentially what happens is that the system decides which order goes into a van and which order goes into a bike. Nobody actually has to intervene, right? Bike is a very, very efficient and, and cheaper way to deliver, right? But since we have large order volumes, we have large quantities, everything can't go in a bike. Right? So we have a combination of van and bike, both located at the same place, and the allocation to van bike happens by itself. So today we have almost 60% of our orders going by bike, 40% of the orders going by van, and technology does that. And post which, the entire route planning based on clustering of orders is done using technology. So there is no manual intervention there at all. Our customer interface, we are getting to becoming as personalized as possible so that we can address each, each of our customers individually, right? We've not got there yet, but we will get there very, very soon. Uh, we run a lot of promotions, we run a lot of campaigns right now which are focused only on individual customers. Um, high level of personalization is what we're essentially driving. We've got a loyalty program called BB Star. We do programs with them very, very differently and you know, they're only addressed to you know, a set of people. So, we personalize and do a lot of stuff. This is just a small glimpse of what we do. Most of what we do at the warehouse, most of what we do at last mile delivery is, is automated. I must talk about something that is not here, which is our reordering process, which we call the MBQ module, right? That is something that we spent humongous amount of time. You know, I must tell you, we have one metric which we are very proud of, extremely proud of, and that metric is what we call fill rate, right? And what is fill rate? If you order 100 items, how much of that do I deliver to you actually, right? If you typically go to a store, your typical fill rates in a store in your list that you carry will be about 90 to 95%. The problem with online is that when you're ordering online, you're expecting 100% to come to you. Because otherwise, if you don't deliver even one item, you have to go back to the store. And if you go back to the store, I rather buy everything there. And that's the kind of pressure we are under all the time, in spite of the best of best of our suppliers delivering only 80 to 90% of what we order. So if I order X number of soaps on my supplier, he will deliver only anywhere between 80 to 90%. The good ones will do 90, 92, 93%. And I am expected to deliver 100% of the customer. It's a hard problem. 
And this could only be solved using technology. Creating a module, creating algorithms which essentially even take care of what we call supplier inefficiencies. Right? So we build those things in. We know patterns of how the product has moved, frequency of when the product gets ordered, and we, and we essentially at every order create, create an order for the, for the supplier, and we're pretty much accurate there. And that has helped our fill rate to be consistent at this number for the last five years, which is 99.6%, right? It's globally benchmarked the best, right? And the only thing that has helped us get there is technology and using algorithms that we've built ourselves to make sure that in spite of supplier inefficiencies, we are able to deliver consistently 99.6. So on and so forth, 99% on-time delivery, 96% in stock, which means when you go to, go to my app or go to my website, there are 35,000 products, 96% of them will be in stock and 4% is out of stock, right? So these are metrics that technology has helped us, you know, put together. We have a great feature called Smart Basket. Um, if we are customers here, I would urge you to use it. Uh, it's essentially your list. Each customer's individual list based on customer's buying pattern in the past. So what customers typically do is that they first start with Smart Basket and they go there and quickly finish the typical routine stuff which is already available there and finish your stuff that you buy very often. The problem there for us is that if customers only do that, then customers won't surf and won't look at, look at other things that we have. So we have to balance this in terms of making sure that smart basket becomes part of life. At the same time, we drive customers to see new things that we've, that we've got, uh, that we keep bringing in every month, which won't be there in your smart basket because you haven't ever bought it. Right, so that's smart basket. It's it's growing in adoption. People are liking it. It's it's up to us now to make sure people use a combination of both. Thank you. Thank you.